Ayurveda Ayurveda and they believe that they have the antibodies to fight the coronavirus so the virus is there tapos gusto mong labanan bala ka but to you to pass that virus if you get it from one place and from another person and pass it to the other guy that's different that is where the right of the state comes in so that to prevent uh, in mass contagion gusto namin putulin kung saan namin putol to stop it that is the reason of the essence of the police power of the state to come up with measures to protect public interest, public health, public safety. Not nandiyan eh, case of uh, peace and order, magkagulo, the state comes in. Yung may contagion and everybody is dying, falling, kasalian public interest is a uncontrolled movement or maski ano people trying to seize other people's property or things like just being into a state of anarchy this state has the right to come in and put a stop on it. It is the survival of the Republic of the Philippines. And this is the, this is the country of Filipinos who obey the law. If you do not obey the law, that's your problem. Bahala ka. Good. Kung makasibat ka. Kung hindi ka makasibat, ay pasensya ka and that goes for everybody that should be made clear hindi kasi ano na tao na they take for granted violating the law now we start a program we start with the secretary of realness because I think that this is the foremost in the minds of people go ahead ma'am let the cameras we try to Thank you, Mr. President. My statement will be very short. It's based on the letter which I wrote to you after you made your statement about not allowing the opening of classes during the time of COVID. And so we are here from the DepEd to assure you that we are one with you in your uncompromising stand on the matter of the health and the safety of our learners and our teachers. Uh, you said, I will not allow the opening of classes na dikit-dikit ang mga bata para sa akin, bakuna muna bago andyan ang bakuna, okay na. Uh, we are saying because there is confusion uh, and anxiety among uh, Filipinos, families, especially the parents. We are, we are here to state that we are one uh, with you, Mr. President, in this non-negotiable uh, commitment. It is the first and the most important principle when we work out our um, learning community plan with all the details, we stated this also. The first and foremost concern is the health and safety of our learners and our teachers. Uh, Mr. President, there has been a confusion among our people who associate uh, the opening of school with what we describe as face-to-face -face classes, uh, where uh, we are used to learners, we are used to teachers facing each other, and we are used to children going to school physically. But we are saying that there will be no face-to-face -face classes and sessions until we are assured of the safety of our children and our teachers. However, we also believe, Mr. President, that we can provide learning opportunities to our students without necessarily
necessarily requiring them to go to school. And this we can do through what is described as blended and distant learning. Mr. President, this is not a new thing. We have many universities and schools which offer distant learning in many ways. We now call it blended learning because various approaches which are adjusted to the actual situation of the communities will be um, applied. But these are all, Mr. President, consistent with your preference that we should not be physically sending our children to school until it is safe to do so. Uh, what is the so-called blending or learning modalities? Because right now, there is a bill which is filed uh, in Congress on this. One, for those who don't have uh, connections, who don't have uh, interactive facilities, uh, there will be what we describe as printed material, which will be delivered to the homes of the students through the barangays, can be picked up also by their parents at designated places. We then coordinate the schedules. We will be working very closely with the barangays and the local governments. And the second approach is now very popular, Mr. President. Uh, this is the online uh, learning uh, platform. And uh, we, in depth ed, we have what we describe as depth ed commons. Right now, we already have over 7 million uh, subscribers. We're in lessons. Uh, homework, quizzes, tips to learners and to teachers are all in the depth and commons and are accessible even to the parents. So we have instances, Mr. President, of parents who are abroad and who are monitoring what is happening to their children. They also go to the depth and commons and check on how their children are doing. Now in cases, Mr. President, where there is no connectivity, printed materials may not be available immediately. We have the classic long-time uh, approaches, which have always been used in education, and this would be television. Those uh, homes which do not necessarily have connectivity and may have television. And the most and the best used uh, approach, of course, is radio-based instruction. You see, on television, 1950s, 60s, radios have been around since the 1800s when it was first um, uh, invented. And we know that two world wars were won through radio uh, messages and not necessarily computers and so on. So you printed modules, Mr. President, um, we have uh, a description of what it entails. And then also, uh, the matter of online, ito yung popular talaga, it's gaining popularity, online distance learning with already 7 million subscribers, and um, we assume here that they have access to internet, and one worry is how about the students and the teachers, do they have access to laptops? We made a survey, uh, Mr. President, of teachers, more than about 788,000 of them uh, to find out whether they have laptops or desktops in their homes. More than 80%, nearly 700,000 have laptops or desktops in their homes. Because teachers uh, acquire these for various uh, uses. They have family members abroad or friends, etc., etc. So um, this is a very, very popular uh, mechanism for uh, dispensing education. Now for those who don't have access to uh, interconnectivity, then we have television. Right now, Mr. President, 15% of television time, this is provided by law, should be dedicated to programs of, uh, programs designed for children. So there are already existing educational programs uh, on television stations. What we need to do is to utilize these programs to transmit our curricula. And we are working out uh, how to do this. Uh, for example, Mr. President, PCOO uh, is volunteering its TV facilities and also IBC 13, which is radio, for the utilization of lessons through radio.
radio and television. Radio and television for those who don't have access to a computer. Now, radio-based instruction is quite popular, Mr. President, because right now, municipalities are volunteering. Usually, municipalities have their radio stations. Cities have radio stations. There are local radio stations, and big networks also have uh, radio stations. And many of them have lessons, which yung uh, tawag nyon is um, uh, schools of the air. Um, mayroong mga uh, religious groups, they give lessons in agriculture, lessons in uh, whatever sciences over the air because alam nila uh, not everybody has access to television or to uh, online computers. So ito yung pinaka-ancient, uh, pinakamatandang uh, paraan for, for teaching as an alternative to face-to-face. Now, Mr. President, what we are doing in the regions is the regions are different from each other. Uh, some regions have many islands, some regions have many mountains, some regions have, uh, have interconnectivity, and so on and so forth. So what our regions are now do doing is to translate our curriculum from curriculum for lecture, the teacher, lectures, the children, uh, uh, for long periods of time, it has to be translated one into digital codes, sa platforms natin, into television programs because children have to be um, taught uh, through in a different way. Iba yung effect ng television programs because their attention span can be very brief as well. And then also converted into radio scripts. So this is where much of the work is now being concentrated. What we are saying, Mr. President, is that we fully and completely support your stand that our children should not be exposed to the dangers of COVID-19 physically, but we are also offering opportunities for them to continue their studies and their learnings. And some people ask, are we prepared? What we are trying to do, Mr. President, are not really new. Hindi naman to bagong invento. Because uh, distance education, many universities have the distance education programs. Many local governments have radio stations. We are utilizing existing ways of communication without necessarily uh, uh, requiring our children to go to school. So they can still go to school, they can still study, teachers can monitor them as well as their parents. So ito yung ano namin, Mr. President, which we would like to share with you and we seek your approval of our uh, alternative ways of learning, which are but education will continue, uh, Mr. President. Thank you. Uh. I'm impressed with the simplicity of the uh, program and uh, feel free to communicate with them. I with a question of funding. I will uh, so to speak, describe the battle of the battle of the battle. Uh, just to, well, if we have no we'll have to forgo many things uh, along the way uh, because of uh, what happened. But the uh, education, I think, uh, if, it, if it is uh, compromised, it should be negligible so that it should go on because uh, uh, the future of this country depends on the how we educate our young people nowadays.